this problem is uh, built on another problem that we talk about in chapter three. Very basic problem that we talk about in chapter three, the Blue Ridge hot top problem. Okay, they're trying to decide how many equal spots and uh, hydrolysis to produce given all the resource constraints. But now, we're adding things here. So if this company produce more than 75 equal spars, because of the learning curve effect, many of you know that when you produce more, you get more efficient and the labor economy of uh, scale. So the profit you can achieve will be decreasing. So the unit profit will increase from originally it was uh, 350 to 375 for every uh, any unit. Okay, but this uh, this new profit does not apply to the first 75 units because those are already being produced. Same to the hydrolysis. And for the hydrolysis, the learning curve effect starts earlier. When you produce more than 50 units, then for the next unit, you can get $325 as compared to the 300 before. So this table summarizes the problem. Still, you have those resource constraints. They need pump, labor tubing, okay? And uh, the unit profit for equal spots will be 350 for the units that's less than equal to 75, but uh, 375 for units beyond that. Okay, so we can, we can write, say, 76. Okay, hydrolysis, so that will be starting from the 51 units. Okay. There were 200 pumps, uh, 1,566 1, hours of labor, and 2,880 feet of tubing available. Now, how do we formulate this problem? First, need to think about decision variables. What are the decision variables we had earlier? We had x1 and x2, right? represent the number of equal spots and hydrolysis to produce, okay? And uh, our objective function was uh, 350 times x1 plus uh, maximize 300 x2 because the profit, unit profit was fixed, okay? But now we have two different unit of uh, you need the profit and uh, we still need to maximize the total profit. Think about decision variables first. Do we still use the same decision variables? If we use the same decision variables, are we able to formulate the objective function to represent the different profits that you're going to achieve when this x changes? No, okay, why? You can write, say, okay, if x is less than equal to 75, say, use this object function. And if x1 is less, greater than 75, use this object function. You will need up, end up with uh, four different object functions. And if this happens, use this. That happens, use this, right? That does not work, we know that. Won't work. And, what we know is that if we put both of them in the objective function, okay, and sometimes we need to turn, say if we only produce less than 75 units, then this one, these two, we'll just focus on equal spots for now, okay, because it's the same logic. We'll focus on equal spots. If we just produce less than 75 units, we know that this is going to happen. And we need to turn this off, right? If x1, if x1 is less than equal to 75, then we need to turn this off, okay? But uh, if uh, x1 is greater than 75, we need to include this, okay? But uh, can we simply use a y here? We want to turn this on or off, but can we use a y here? No, why? Y's value is one. If you use y, it's zero or one, you're counting only one unit of profit if you produce more than 75 units, okay? 
Okay, so we can't. So we know that we need to use x, right? Because we are counting, we are calculating the total profit. And total profit depends on how many, how many units you produce. So this need to time this x1, so you get the total profit, but we know we need to turn this off sometime. But can we do, if you use 1 minus 75 times 375, what happens if x1 is less than 75 units? You're going to have negative profit. x1 minus 75 times y1. Same problem, if your x1 is less than 75, you get negative value. Also, the more important issue with this is, is this still linear? If you multiply x and y together, is it still linear? No. Okay, it's not linear, and we don't want nonlinear. This problem we can solve it with uh, integer linear programming. Okay, we don't want nonlinear. Pay attention to here. I saw in the previous test, a lot of people do this way x times y. Makes sense. When y is 0, you, you count it into the total profit. And when y is 0, then you don't count it. But it's nonlinear. And we don't like nonlinear. Okay. Then think again. <coughs> so think about it again. We know that we need to turn those on and off. Can we just uh, can we just include uh, both of them? Okay, say x1 timeless. We know that this will, will happen for sure. When x1 is from 0 to 75 units, this will happen for sure. What we don't know is this part. Can we include it also? So this will be x11. We can do this part as like seven, x1 minus 75 because we don't know what's going to happen on x1. Okay. But what we can do is add another decision variable. Okay. x12. And make it. and we add them together. And later, depending on this value, those profits will be included or not. We can still turn those values off, depending on the relationship of x11 and 12. And we are going to use a binary variable to establish the relationship. Okay, so you see the difference between this problem and the previous one is that, uh, say like the fixed charge problem, the setup cost only happens once. So you can use a Y to turn it on or off, okay? But in this case, th these are unit profits, okay? You have to multiply the units that you're going to produce beyond that 75 to take into account the profits produced from here in your total profits. But uh, this X12 does not have to be greater than equal to zero. It can be zero, right? When this is zero, then we don't count this profits, okay? Then what we need will be to establish the relationship between your x12 and x11 because they are closely related. Okay, I'll say that again. We can multiply this x to this 375. And x12 will represent the units that we're going to produce beyond this 75 units. Okay. This x12 does not have to be greater than zero. Which means when x12 equals to be zero, then we're not counting this part of profit. But if we do produce, say like the, the optimal solution suggests that we are going to produce more than 75 units, then we are counting this part of profit to our total objective function. And what we need to do is to establish relationship with uh, between your x11 and x12. Think about it, make sense? Okay, first, let me define the decision variables. So we'll use x11 to represent number of equal spots produced within the first 75 units. Okay, then x12 will be the number of equal spots produced after the first 75 units. Okay, so this is the way. Having two different variables is the way to deal with having two values that you need to include in your objective function. 
um, instead of having a logical condition, say if this happens, use this, or that happens, use other. Include all of them. Include both situations. And just turn one off when that's uh, not going to happen. OK, so same for hydrolysis. So it's the 50 units and then beyond the 50 units. OK, so now looking at uh, these two, I'll ask you guys to write a condition first. What's the relationship between these two variables? R write on the paper. Or if you want to type, think about it. What's the relationship of these two variables? So here you can, you can write uh, when this, uh, then, or if this, uh, then. OK, write that condition out. So we're going to translate it into a mathematical constraint formulation. Looking at the definition of x11 and x12, and write uh, the condition. Say if this value is what, then the other value need to be what. It's kind of like we wrote: uh, if xi is greater than zero, then y need to be one, and if xi is x1 is uh, equal to zero, your y1 also need to be one. So now evaluate these two. Remembering that x11 represents unit produced within the first 75, and x12 represents produced after the 75. Okay, so maybe more hints. Can x12 happen before x11 reach 75? No, you cannot start to produce the 76 units until you produced all 75, right? OK, so that means what? We are saying x12 is a number produced after the first 75 units. So which means 70, x12 is the starting from the 76, 77th, all the way. You don't have to subtract them, right? So even though x12 may represent the 76 unit produced, the 77 unit, what's its value? It, the x12 value. Is it 76 or 1? One? 1, right? When x12 equals to be 1, it means it is the 76 unit. And equals to 2, that means it is the 77th unit produced. It won't, it, it's not the 76. If it's 76, that means what? It's the 151 units produced. What's the relationship between these two? Let's talk about the objective function. OK, I want to get that relationship out, but maybe talking about objective function will make it easier to understand. So with this definition, with this definition, what do you think the objective function should be? So would be maximize 350 times x11 plus 375 times x12, right? To, to get the profits you produce for the first 75 and the starting from the 76. OK, if, we, if say you are thinking about this, uh, say, equals to be 76, what does that mean? You are counting 76 units of uh, this profit. Which means that beyond the 75 units, you produce 76 more, right? To make this make sense. But if your x12 equals to be 1, that means you are producing the 76 units, but we only count one profit from it, which is 375. OK, hope this part is clear. Clear? OK, and then. And plus uh, this part, 300x21 plus 325x22. OK, so same logic. With the objective function, let's think about the constraint. And to work on the constraint, let's establish the relationship between x11 and 12 again. Following what I just suggested, 
can x1 2 start to be greater than 0 before x11 reach 75? No, right? You can't. Okay, so what does that mean? If x11 is less than or equal to 75, your x12 need to be 0. Okay. And what about the other? x11 can only be between 0 and 75, right? Okay, so does this really help? What about uh, the other way? What's that? I guess. Uh, But does it have to be greater than zero? Okay. So if we look at these two, see if it helps. So if x11 is between zero and the 75, x12 is zero. Here. So this one, okay, so that's one way. Um, remember last time we talked about uh, which way do you force? Do you use, uh, like in the fixed charge problem, do you use the x to force the y value or do you use the y value to force the x value? In that case, it's pretty simple. You have to use the x value to force the y, right? Y value depends on x. So if x is greater than zero, your y have to go to one. Okay, it's not the other way, logically. But in this case, it's a little hard. It's like, okay, which way to go? Then let's write out both. Okay, and then we figure out which way is easier. So if a user is using x11 value to force x12 value. Okay, what about uh, we use x12? If x12 is uh, equal to zero. x11 need to be less than or equal to 55. And if uh, x12 is uh, greater than 0, here we only consider greater, right? Right? If it's greater than or equal to that, there's no meaning. Because uh, for x12, it, it can only have two conditions. Equal to 0, don't produce. Or greater than 0, you produce. Okay, if it's greater than 0, x11 need to be what? Need to be equal to 75. Then compare these to see which one makes more sense. <coughs> like if you look at this one, it does not really help us uh, differentiate the situation on the x12 value. It's uh, greater equal to greater equal to here. The other thing I try to look to see which one I choose is to see if the first condition is uh, collectively exhaustive which means it covers all the situation. Okay, like, like for this x12 value, we all know like it can be less than or equal to zero, right? So equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero, just looking at these two, it includes all the situation that can happen to x12. So we don't have other situation to think about. Okay, and with these two, we, we come up with two relationship with x11. But for this one, what happens, can this be greater than or equal to? Oh, so we have less than 75, can, it can also, can it be this way? It can't, because we know from our definition. But still, this is another situation. To consider this, do we add a condition? Do we add a constraint like this? So, for me, I prefer this first way, because uh, the x12 situation includes all the situation that can happen. But for this one, it does not, and we need to add a constraint to it. Okay, <coughs> but uh, feel free to work on this if you like this one. I think you may you may able to formulate the same constraint. But for this moment, <coughs> let's work on. It's the first the situation here. Then okay, so let's work on this first.
consider these two conditions. What do you want? Which one do you want to start work on? No, after solving so many problems, I, I prefer to look at this one. Why? Because of the reason that I talked about earlier. How to force a variable to be equal to something. Okay, and when you look at uh, this first condition, and uh, uh, by the way, both of them are non-binary variables, but we know that uh, to, ha to have those conditions happening, we need binary variables, because it, it relates to the logical um, condition, right? And we need binaries, okay? We just need a binary variable to link these two, one binary or two or three, we don't know. But we need binary variables to link these uh, conditions together, okay? And uh, how to force uh, a value to be equal to a value. You, you, you look at this situation, x11 can be equal to 75. This is one condition we need to force, but we cannot write it. We can't write x11 equal to 75 because there is another condition that you need to satisfy. So what, writing this way won't work. Okay, and then we talk about, okay, to force this value to be equal to something, what do you do? Y less than equal to x11 less than equal to 75, or 75 less than equal to x11 less than equal to 75 times y, or you use 2y, 75 times y1 less than equal to x11 less than equal to 75, y2. So, these are three things that you can consider to force your x11 value to be equal to a 75. Okay, so if you remember this, when you see situations like this, okay, you need to force a value equal to be something in a certain situation, but there are other situations you need to deal with, then start with conditions like this. Okay, okay then you look at here. You look at the first constraint. So, so this is what we come up with. We don't know which one will work. Okay. Then you look at this condition here. To achieve this condition, that means uh, we need to use the same constraint to achieve both conditions, right? We need to use the same, condi same constraint to achieve both conditions. And uh, we know that all of the three will help us achieve this uh, second condition, which is x11 equal to 75. Then which will help us achieve this first condition? Let's check, okay. So we want our x11 less than equal to 75. Um, we are working on this right, right side first. Um, then we can link them to x12, okay. So look at this one. If we use 75y less than equal to x11 less than equal to 75, does that work? So when y equals to be 1, what do you have x value? 75, right? When y equals to be 0, what do you have? You have uh, 0 times 75 less than equal to Oh, good, we got it. But uh, say if we um, work on this one, okay, so we know this worked. Usually when this worked, then you just go ahead with it. You won't do the other, but I just want to do the other just to demonstrate that uh, when you have a condition, work through it to see if it helps. Okay, so let, let's look at, say, the second one. It's 75 less than equal to x11 less than equal to 75 times y. When y equals to be 1, we do get what we need, um, 75. That's, uh, that's how we come up with that constraint for first place. But when y is uh, 0, doesn't make sense at all, right? When y is 0, you're saying x11 needs to be less than or equal to 0, but also greater than or equal to 75. So it does not work. Okay. And this will work. This third one. This will work, but you don't need it. And if you use it, you will have to link. So it's like y1 on this side. You're going to say, okay, then what happens to y2? 
So we figured out, okay, that's the condition that worked to help the right side for x11. Okay, then, not done yet. <coughs> we need to link. So we have uh, if x2 is 0, then x11 need to be what? Uh, less than or equal to 75. And if x12 is greater than 0, which means you start to produce the 76 unit, x11 need to be equal to 75. So this is what we want. And we figured that the condition is uh, 75 y. So I'll link it to the x, okay? Less than or equal to x11, x less than or equal to 75. That's uh, what we came up there, okay? So what we now know is that uh, this uh, condition works for the x11 value. And what we want is that, uh, okay, now, now if uh, y11 is equal to 1, then our x11 equals to be 75. Okay, and we want to, what we want is uh, x12 need to be greater than 0. We want our x12 to be greater than 0. And if, uh, uh, I will say when. When y11 is 0, my x11 is uh, less than or equal to 75. Then my x12 need to be 0. Then how do I, how do I link this part? How do I use the y value to force these values? Because we already get this part done by using the y's. Okay, now we want to use those y's to force those values because that's what happens. Um, recognize this? Do you recognize this? What's that problem? What's the problem we work with? The fixed charge problem. And what was the challenge in that one? When you produce a product, the setup cost need to be considered, right? And we achieve that by setting this y to be 1. And uh, if you don't produce that product, which means uh, produce zero units, you don't include the setup cost. See if that's the same with here. When this is greater than zero, your y is one. When this is zero, your y is zero. Okay, so with this, I illustrate the importance of recognizing the pattern. Okay, of course you can figure this out uh, the way that we figured these out. But if you remember the pattern here, oh, so that's the same as what we talked about earlier, then you don't need to spend all those time to figure out from scratch again. Okay, so what's the constraint we use in that case? So it's x12. Less than equal to the big M, right? Times the y, y11 here. And we need to use that, uh, that's the constraint that we used. Okay, that's the constraint we used. Let's test it to, to see if we can get it. Okay, so when y is 1, x12, is that equal to the big M? Okay, which is its upper bound and it's greater than, is it greater than zero? about it. And when y is 0, our x12 need to be less than or equal to a 0 value times y, which is 0, right? Which is 0. And we know that x12 is greater than or equal to 0, right? Together we get x12 equal to 0. Okay, but what about this part? 
What about this part? What we want is x12 is greater than 0. And what we have is x12 is greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to its upper bound. It can still be equal to 0. Okay. Does that mean the original constraint we came up was wrong? Do you guys remember that? The fixed charge problem. We used the, this, con we used this uh, constraint. Because of what? We use this because of the objective function. OK, the objective function says uh, y will be 0 anyway if you don't constrain it. OK, so that's why we just need to formulate a constraint that force y to be 1 when we need it to be. We didn't consider this uh, 0 value here. So that means uh, besides this, we need another constraint. So we need another constraint to make sure that it's greater than 0. So that means uh, add a constraint on this side, OK? Make sense? Because we want it to be greater than something. So add a constraint on this side so that it's greater than 0. We can't write this, right? Still, because x12 can be 0. We can't write this. So we just need a value that will be 0 someplace, sometime, or 1. And when that value is 0, then this side is 0. And we multiply a value here. Thinking about the minimum order size problem. OK. And what's the minimum size in this case? For x12, for x12, which is the 76 units? What's the minimum you can produce beyond the 75 units? 1, right? Right, you can just produce one unit because they didn't set any, any, any limit. Say if you produce more than 75, then you need to produce, uh, um, say, 85 units. If that's the case, what do you add? Then you, you would use 10 to, to time the y, right? But in this case, there is no condition like that setting up. And the minimum unit you can produce is just one unit. You can pr to just produce 76 units. $350 for the first 75 units, and then the 375 for the 76 units. OK, so here, we're just saying y, 1 times y. So we'll just have a y here, which is like this. OK, so that's the one that I asked you to write down. OK, so it's a y less than equal to when y is equal to 1. Because of the right hand side, that's what we get. But because of the um, this, this left hand side, we get x12 greater than equal to a 1, which means uh, it is greater than 0. OK, got it? We, we did get what we want. So with this constraint, um, this constraint, we linked our y to the x12. And uh, with uh, this constraint here, we linked our y to x11 and achieved these uh, conditions. OK, so the first constraint will be this one, and the second will be this one. These are the ones that we came up with. This is the first one and the second one. A um, little messy. Just uh, OK, so. OK, so greater than or equal to y11. One, one. So we need these two constraints to force uh, these two conditions. OK, can you write out for the hydrolysis? Can you please write out the constraints for hydrolysis, which is the profit will change if you produce more than 50 units. So in this case, it's 75 units, and the other case is 50 units. We we'll define them in the same way. OK, so I'll put this on here. And please write out the constraint for, write out the constraint for x21 and x22. So these, these two are for x11 and x12.
And by the way, we need to find out the m value. We can just leave this here. Otherwise, it's not linear. Okay. Find the value, which is the upper limit of your x one two. 